Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today I'm gonna tell you about my top five electric unicycles of 2020. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. Okay, so this list will include my top five favorite electric unicycles of 2020 and a couple of notes about it. All of these unicycles I have tried. I have stacked up from 200 kilometers and upwards on each of these unicycles. And in this list, I'll mention things like price to performance ratio, safety, build quality, ride features, and the relation of this exact unicycle to other electric unicycles at a similar price point or of a similar category. With that said, also all of these unicycles are available at myewheel.com. So if you want to buy a electric unicycle like this in Europe, be sure to check out myewheel.com and use the offer code or promotion code or coupon code wrong way to save an additional 5% on the EUC. And I also do receive a kickback from each of this order. So you also help out the channel by using this link. With that said, let's get on to the list. On number five, it's the cheapest electric unicycle in this lineup. And it is the Bigoda or Gotway MCM5 V2. And at a price of 950 euros at my e-wheel, it's really like the best commuter thing you can buy at this price point because it has a pretty substantial battery of 800 watt hours, which gives you a range of 40 kilometers when driving a bit faster to maybe 50, 55 if you ride a bit slower. It has a motor that really packs a punch because it has 1500 watts of power. It can climb hills up to 35 degrees. Barely, but it can do it. It's a 14 inch diameter wheel, but the upgrade to the version before, which was released a bit of a time ago, yes, I don't know when exactly, has some really important upgrades. Mainly, the tire is now a two and a half wide tire, which actually makes this wheel also sort of a 15 inch wheel, just because of the rubber is so thick. And because the rubber is thick, the ride is a lot better, it's a lot safer, it's grippier, and the pedal hangers of this wheel were also shortened, so so now you are standing up higher on the MCM5 V2 as opposed to the MCM5 V1. Gosh, I wish they made it with the Tesla V3. The top speed of this EUC is around 35 to 40 kilometers an hour, depending on the battery state, weight of the rider, etc. The acceleration is really zippy as it is also a small wheel, but still a pretty big motor. When it comes to features, it pretty much has all of it, but it also has some downsides. The upsides are like it has a pretty okay front light, not the best, but you know, what, what can we expect at this price point? It has some RGB that looks pretty cool. It has a trolley handle that is actually really tall. It's uh, really practical for this size of an electric unicycle. It has a pretty comfortable handle with a lift switch, so it's easy to just carry it upstairs. It has a USB port for charging, and that's pretty much it. When it comes to the downsides of this electric unicycle, there is really no powerful taillight, so you have to definitely buy something else maybe to put on your helmet or just on the EUC to make you more visible in the night. It comes with a slow charger, one and a half amps, so a full charge will take around. The build quality is okay, but I wouldn't say it's like the best on the market. Still, I think that it can handle quite a lot, and I think it's also rain and water proof. The fourth downside is that it has sort of a bit of a protruding logo on each side and this can hurt you a bit if you just have a bit of a different shape of a leg or different shoes on be sure to put some foam there to solve this issue and another downside is that the trolley handle so sort of just goes down ever so slightly if you just push it a bit too much other than that i think it's a great commuter unicycle and at this price point you can't really choose something that is better for riding with a bigger range of a, with a better speed. The MCM5 packs a punch, has a good range. It just weighs 19 kilograms, so it can still lift it easily. It has pretty much all the features you need. Oh, I forgot, it also doesn't have a Bluetooth speaker. But you know, that's that. I think that the ride experience is great and I can just only wholeheartedly recommend this EUC. Now, moving on to number four. What do we have a number four? 
it is no other than the Emotion V11. I've ridden this wheel for around 2200 kilometers. So it's one of the wheels I did really ride a lot this year and I could really develop a feeling for it. And I think it's great actually. So the most important thing about the V11 obviously is that it has suspension and it's one of the three wheels released this year that come with suspension. And I think that the suspension and the V11 is pretty comfortable and it really makes the ride much better in the city. The battery size is 1500 watt hours so it gives you a range of like 60 kilometers maybe also 90 kilometers if you ride like really slowly and carefully but usually I would just say something around 60 kilometers with like usual I mean usual my style of riding. So oftentimes over 30 kilometers an hour 40 kilometers an hour over 50 it's it's really hard to get the V11 over 50. The motor is a hollow bore motor with 2200 watts of power, which is uh, okay, up to 30 kilometers an hour, but above that I wouldn't really push that wheel too hard. Naturally, it's a 18 inch wheel with a three inch wide tire, so plenty of grip, a really comfortable ride, and the suspension really shines in this wheel. It's really comfortable to ride this wheel on any surface, especially on cobblestone or some sort of dirt paths. It, it really just softens up the ride so much. The suspension also has a positive and negative chamber, so you can dial it in to your needs. Once again, I wouldn't recommend pushing this wheel above 45 kilometers an hour too much because it's a 84 volt wheel it's not really designed for that and the technology on the motherboard is I wouldn't say not that far as for example the technology on veteran or Bigoda Gotway wheels and you know the other wheels are also 100 volt that's what floats my boat a bit more when it comes to features the Emotion V11 is packed with them the only thing that is not available on the V11 is a Bluetooth speaker which you can connect to your phone and it doesn't have RGB. The front light is great, it's sort of a motorcycle grade light with a really nice beam that won't blind anyone. Uh, it has a daytime running light which looks mwah, magnificent. The real ta tail light is also looking sort of like a mo motorcycle, it's really bright and really well visible in the night. It has a trolley handle, really comfortable once again and locks in place, really nothing wrong with that. A lift sensor and the cool thing about it is that you can also lift up the trolley handle and still carry it with the handle so that's pretty that's a pretty pretty cool thing um, it has a usb port for charging and a spot for two chargers so the standard charging time of the v11 is i think around nine hours but if you use two chargers you can get it down to four and a half hours. The Inmotion V11 is also really just tightly assembled and it has a lot of screws and it's also uh, waterproof but keep in mind that with my V11 which was one of the first batches I had issues with bearings with the hollow bore motor so after around 2000 kilometers the bearings weren't really alive. So in the newer versions I heard that they have bigger bearings or ju they just sealed them or did something to the bearings so now there's, this issue should be solved but I don't know. I think it's better but I don't know I didn't write it. And when it comes to build quality I think it's really neat neatly assembled. You can really see that Emotion is a big company and they design the products for like huge quantities so, sort of like Apple but I wouldn't say that the build quality is like stellar. It's really complicated and and if you mess up one part of the EUC, then you can't open up the other one. So in my V11, I broke the uh, lower parts of a screw, so I couldn't take out this, uh, the suspension, or I broke the screws to the motor because they were too soft, and I, I couldn't just get the motor out of the wheel. But <laughs> if you have service or warranty at my e-wheel, you can't really go wrong. And fun fact, I traded my V11 for a 2019 Galway MSX, and the owner of the V11 actually restored pretty much all of it and now it rides pretty much like it was riding the day I got it. So the V11 is really like a really comfortable commuter wheels. A good part of the V11 is also the ultra high foot plate placement so it's really hard to scratch them but you can damage for example in the fall the lower parts of the suspension system. Anyways when riding in a forest or all around city streets it's really hard to scrape the pedals. It also really allows you to turn sharply or have a really small turning radius even though you have a 18 inch wheel. And the EX just
I think it also has a such a stunning look. It looks great and it's really a head turner. So if you ride on a V11, you'll get a lot of bystanders just looking at you and thinking, what, what is this spaceship? So at the price of 2000 euros, I can recommend the V11 for casual riders, for commuters, for people that just really want a comfortable ride. And now moving on to number three. And this is actually a demo wheel I still have. It is the Bigotti Bigode EX, the first suspension wheel by Bigode. I really didn't expect that. Like, I, I really wanted to put it up higher on the list, but there are some things that keep me from doing that. So the Bigode EX or Bigode, I just, I know, Bigode. Bigode. Why, why, why do they have to change it from Godway? Is the first suspension wheel by this company. In comparison to the other two, wheels with suspension that were released this year, it has a way better performance, which I like. It has a 2700 watt hour battery, which gives you a range of 90 kilometers in the winter at high speed. And I didn't really also bring the battery to zero then. It's, it's really a long range wheel. It also packs the most powerful motor now on the market with 3.5 kilowatts of power, which gives you plenty torque and power. The top speed is around 60 kilometers an hour. Maybe you can push it a bit higher, but I wouldn't really recommend it that much. That's, that's where the 80% of the power beeps start to kick in. It's not a light wheel by any means it weighs 38 kilograms making it the heaviest wheel I've ever tried you really need to lean into it to get the power out of it or you know the performance but once you do it it's amazing it's definitely not the sort of a wheel that just you know rides by itself you just lean and it goes you really have to try a little harder on the EX. So when it comes to features on the EX, it's packed to the brim with features. It has a front daytime running light, as you can see, a front light, which is, uh, for this price, I would expect a better light, as, at least as good as the MSP or the new Monster Pro. It has a trolley handle, which in this demo version is bad, but in the production version, they will fix it. It has a okay rear tail light, nothing special, but it's still okay visible i would say it has a lift switch to lift it up but it's really hard to just you know grab it and go on the first or second floor probably you would just push it up the stairs with the power of the motor it also has speakers which are really loud i think they're that they are the best speakers on any euc available right now lots of bass and just awesome loudness these speakers are really good the wheel has a 20 inch diameter wheel <laughs> with uh, tons of grip and it also has a bit more thread to it so it's actually a bit better for off-roading than other gotways currently available well maybe except for the monster v3 when it comes to the ride quality i think that the suspension performs really fine in this wheel it is a linear suspension so as you use up more of the travel the, it won't get harder so it just at some point will hit the the end of the travel which is sort of a clonk and it doesn't have a rebound function like the two other um, electric unicycles on the market but still I think that the solution is really good let me tell you why because on this wheel you actually feel the road a lot more in my opinion than on the two other wheels that came out this year and I think that the six centimeter travel travel is actually enough on the wheel now you still feel a lot more imperfections than for example on the V11 or a S18, but it really takes off the edge from bigger bumps and it's definitely way, 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 way more comfortable and safer than for example, a veteran, a MSP or you know, a monster when hitting a big bump on the road. It's, it's really great at that. A great thing about the EX is also the high pedal placement. So you can just really carve so hard on this wheel. It's the, my favorite wheel to carve on this year. And it has, once again, plenty of power. Now, the downsides of the EX is obviously the price. It's the most expensive wheel on uh, this list, but it doesn't have the biggest battery. And the thing that also kept me from putting it higher on the list is the build quality. So it still doesn't have a roll cage, any, you know, preventative measures or just like a hard shell to make this wheel safer when crashing or when it just you know falls somewhere it's really sort of even more flimsy than the other gotways now this is still a demo wheel so things might change in the you know official production versions but here's my issues that i had 
in the demo wheel. Hopefully they're already solved in the production versions. So number one, water sealing. <laughs> That's a big issue in the EX because um, essentially Galway fitted a huge motherboard with a huge heat sink in this wheel. Like the MOSFETs are just poof and capacitors are huge on the wheel. And they thought, you know, we need more cooling because how will it survive overheat hill? And they actually put another hole into this wheel from the inside. So there is one hole in the wheel behind the motherboard. So, you know, fresh air can cool the motherboard, but there's actually another hole on the lower side of the wheel where air can just flow in and flow out of the radiators. And they didn't put any sort of filter there and they did not seal the box that was around this hole. So when I was riding in rain, a lot of water just came into the wheel and was just spraying all around, also causing the wheel to cut off at some point. Now I've sealed the box and I think now this was the culprit, everything was fine. All the seals around the wheel were perfectly fine because the other side of the wheel had no issues at all. So I think that is the main gripe with, with my demo unit of the EX, but I'm sure that Godwave will find a way to solve this issue, especially in a production version of the wheel. The top parts of the EX are also quite flimsy. Uh, the light unit, the front, the rear light unit, and the upper side of the handle are just all put in place without any screws, any seal, nothing. And I hope this will change as well in the production version because I just had one like a bit bigger fall uh, on this uh, EUC and you know it just disassembled itself <laughs> when falling down. I hope they fix this. If they don't fix this you, you know you have, you'll have to buy uh, additional front bumpers and rear bumpers and all over bumpers for this wheel. But still I think it is a great wheel, a great performing wheel, the best wheel in my opinion amongst suspension wheels currently available on the market. With its performance, with its range, with its ride, uh, with its carving abilities and balance and tire, I, I think it's just like, I really, really like this wheel. But I don't think it's, it deserves number two or number one on this list. Now, we go on to number two. Number two of my top five electric unicycles of 2020. Now, this is the Bigodi RS19 and the Gotway MSP. Both of these unicycles are from the M Super lineup by Gotway, which is now called Bigodi. And I think that, you know, the price for the performance ratio, the ride, it's just unbeatable in my opinion. So this is a 18 or 19 inch wheel by Bigodi. Amongst these two, I would say that the MSP, which is a version that came out at the beginning of the year, is the more reliable and the more, you know, safe option amongst these two. And the RS19 is the more powerful version, but also the heavier one and with a small danger, you know, maybe they'll fix it, on the bearing side. Like all of the wheels that came out this year with the hollow motor design, it's just a matter of time when we will see if the bearings will hold up or not. So in this list, it's the V11, the EX, and the Galway RS19. So when it comes to these two wheels, I'll tell you about the RS19 because that's the wheel that's currently produced, currently available at Galway. And most of the things are very similar to the MSP. The RS19 has a 1800 watt hour LG battery, which gives a range of around 70 kilometers with my usual kind of riding. If you ride slower, probably you could get it up to like 90 or 100, but you really just need to ride slower then. It has a uh, 2600 watt motor and it's a hollow bore motor, which is really powerful and extremely smooth, much smoother than the MSP. And there are also two versions available, a high torque and a high speed. If you want speed, get the speed. If you want torque, get the torque. The top speed on the high speed is around 70, maybe 73-ish, 5-ish, uh, I don't know, but it's already on the edge then. And on the high torque, it's around 60. So I would personally just get the high speed because it's still a very, very torquey wheel because it gives you more headroom in the top speed department and won't cut out on you at 60 or 65, definitely not at a full charge, maybe at 5%, but you know, that's where you don't write right 65. You don't write 65 when you have 5% of battery. It can climb up to 40 degrees. So it's insane how much power the, uh, this unicycle has. And when it comes to features, it's packed with them. So it has a trolley 
poly handle, which is now more powerful, more sturdy than on the MSP. Uh, when you get used to it, it's a great trolley handle. I can't complain about it. It has uh, a twin T6 light setup uh, in the front, which is also really decent. Um, it has RGB strips, front and rear, which makes you way more visible in the night. You can, for example, set them to white in the front and red in the rear. Really, really cool. You will also find a new charge port arrangement with two charge ports that can take up to 8 amps total of power, meaning that if you connect two standard Galway chargers, it will charge from 0-100% to in under 3 hours. Amazing! It has speakers which are pretty, pretty loud, the beeper, you know, the 80% warning is also really well audible and it also has a lift sensor so you can easily carry it up the stairs. It weighs 28 kilograms so it's not, uh, it's, you know, it's a pretty fat M Super lineup. And when it comes to the shell it's pretty robust actually and it also has pretty big foot plates. Now the RS at the beginning had a bit foot plates that were just a bit lower to the ground which was cool for fast riding on the street. It's a bit worse for riding off-road but the newer versions will have the same pedal height as the old MSP which is great. When it comes to the ride there's just really nothing that comes close to the wheel. It has endless amount of power, it's really nimble, you can turn on it at high speed and low speed, it's great for jumps, it's great pretty much for anything. It's just such a great all-rounder. And if you want to have a little bit more fun when you go to work or when you want to have a little more fun when you are off work, then the MSP is just great for it. And at the price of 1800 euros, you just really can't go wrong with this wheel. And with the warranty at my evil, you're also on the safe side with the bearings. Now the MSP, which also came out this year, has a little less features, a little less, less of bling blang, but it has also less weight at around 25 kilograms. It's also less smooth but the motor doesn't have the new design of Gotway so you're on the safer side when it comes to bearings and longevity in, in my opinion but all in all in terms of you know the wheel all around the RS19 is just better when the bearings will work and if you like the additional weight. So this is number two and what is on number one? Probably you already know. Let me get it out. Number one is no other than the veteran Sherman. The highlight of the year. The uprising star. <laughs> the, the wheel that so many people just fell in love with this year. And there are many, many reasons to just love this wheel. It is the best of the technology we have come to know in wheels so far. It has the biggest battery on the market. Um, yeah, you know, the Monster Pro is not yet out. At 3200 watt hours, I did several range tests of it and this is actually my personal wheel which already has 2200 kilometers on the clock. Um, the range is from like 90 or 100 kilometers where you, when you drive faster up to 150 kilometers if you ride around 35 kilometers an hour. It's really insane how long you can ride on the veteran Sherman. On the veteran Sherman I pretty much don't have any range anxiety at all. It's really fast, it accelerates insanely fast, well maybe not as zippy as the MSP but still really 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 respectable and the top speed is I think the highest amongst all the wheels. We'll still find out you know next year uh, on the Monster Pro and on the Godway EXN, Bigoda EXN if they're faster but this is insane and I've really didn't see many cutouts on this wheel because it's just so powerful. My top speed on it was around 75 kilometers an hour, but I've seen guys also doing 80, 82. So there's plenty of headroom in terms of top speed on this wheel. And you can also go fast until the lower stage of battery because the battery here is just so huge. It's 240 cells. Come on, that's huge. Uh, when it comes to features, it also packs a lot. It has the most powerful front lights. Let me just turn them on. Oof. It's a mar morning star. Most powerful lights in the front. Um, they're 
they have a very fo focused beam and they aren't like as well profiled as for example the ones on the V11, but they're the brightest. They shine the furthest. And you can also swap them out easily because it's just a module. Hey, oh, and, and it also has like these police lights. Now they're red, by the way, uh, in the newer batches. The taillight is also, also really well visible and it actually also includes turn signals. So if you turn to one side or the other, it will just, it will just show you like one side of the tail light. It doesn't come with a speaker, but it comes with a LCD screen, which is also sealed correctly because it's working fine and I didn't put any tape on it. It shows you the current speed, you can set up the pedal angle, you, you can reset your trip odometer, and you have four buttons to select all of these options. Also the, you know, pedal stiffness setting and all of that. This is a great addition and it most importantly shows you the speed and the battery percentage when you're riding. So you just look down and you can see, oh, I'm going 65. Mm, I can go five kilometers an hour faster. <laughs> it also has a great trolley handle in the middle of the wheel so you can stroll it around to the front and to the rear and it also has two charge ports and it comes with a standard charger. You can charge it up in around six hours, which is already pretty fast. And with two chargers, you can charge it up in three hours. Really, really quick charging time. It doesn't have any USB connector on the wheel, but I guess that's something Veteran chose to do because they wanted to keep the wheel as simple, as reliable as possible. And reliable it is. No issues at all during the 2,200 kilometers I've done. The Veteran Sherman comes with two types of tires you can get, both on the same 2,500 watt motor. And it's the off-road tire, which I have fitted, and a more of a street-focused tire, which is better for turns and riding on asphalt. Now one small issue with these tires is that sometimes they are not really well centered but recently a friend of mine, Miechu Cheers, uh, got a veteran and he actually has the wheel centered properly. So I don't know, sometimes you need to just center the tire. When it comes to the ride it's really awesome, it glides on the street, it's perfectly balanced like the Spiffing Brits videos, but it doesn't come without any flaws. I would say that the Veteran Sherman's really like a cruiser, like a grand tour, a wheel that is fast, a wheel that has a lot of range, but necessarily it's like not that much fun, like possibly the MSP or the EX can get. So it doesn't climb that steep of a hills, but you know, the hills I climb are just really sort of extreme. So it can go easily up 25 degrees with 30 degrees and a bit of a longer slope. It does start to have a small issues and at 35 and 40, it's kind of easy to overpower the wheel. So and the MSP and the RS19 are better in this regard. I still yet have to test the EX and this department. Pedals are also lower to the ground, at least in my 2020 version, um, and you scrape them quite a bit. The way to prevent that is to get some Nilanova pedals like I have installed here that have a adjustable pedal height. Hoo hoo hoo. This helps a lot, but in the newer veterans, the pedal hangers were actually shortened, so the wheel is now higher off the ground, preventing some possible scrapage when turning. The front is also a bit low to the ground, so clearing higher curbs is also not that easy. You should probably do it, do it slower, but going downstairs is just fine, as the wheel is, has also just so much thick rubber that it's really difficult to damage the rim. The motor is not a hollow bore motor, and I think that's a good part of it. It's just such a reliable thing. We, we've seen them already so many times on wheels, and I think that's the way to go, at least for now, if you want the biggest re reliability. Some things I don't like about the Veteran is also that it has pedal dipping, well, a bit when it comes to the turns, very similar to the, the Gotways, but it also slides around, sort of glides around when you ride on this wheel. When you accelerate, it goes down. When you brake, it goes up. Uh, it's I don't like that that much about the Veteran, but I just got used to it. I definitely like the feel of Gotways more because they're just stiff once you accelerate. But the good thing about the Veteran is that when the wheel bounces up and down, it doesn't have any pedal dipping, which Gotways have. Uh, and this is, this is a thing I don't like about the Gotway. So you can go off-road on the Veteran, just be sure to watch out for some, you know, roots that are a bit taller or just some rocks because it's a bit easier to scrape it. So because of that, because the whole package is just so good, I think that the Veteran Sherman, even though it's 2,700 euro, 
is the best value for a EUC you can get in 2020 because of how much you get for this price. You get the most range. It's, I know, it's, it's a bit heavy at 33 kilograms, but still I can lift it. Like it's not that hard and you can easily just push it upstairs. And if you want to like totally replace your car or motorcycle or whatever you want to replace with a EUC, it's very probable that the veteran is the best choice here. Now for fun stuff, for jumping uh, and just, you know, shorter trips, I would still recommend the MSP or the RS19 more. And if you need a comfier ride and more torque, I would recommend the EX, but as a whole package for commuting, for cruising, for long trips, for, you know, fast riding at, at the top end and for a very, robust wheel that also has a roll cage and is very reliable that is why the veteran sherman is my number one wheel my top top one wheel of 2020. now also honorable mentions uh emotion v8f came out this year it's a really cool wheel and if you get it at a lower price i think it's still reasonable to get it if you need just something that looks a bit nicer and a better trolley handler than the uh, mcm5 uh, but it will won't survive like much performance. I, I burned a fuse on mine. <laughs> so, uh, but I think still for commuting, it's a great wheel, really light, really fun and nimble. Uh, the S18 is also a honorable mention. It's a great suspension wheel, but it's not a really good performance wheel and it's really expensive as well. So, uh, you know, I did a video on the S18 and you don't want to um, overpower this wheel for sure because it can cut out of you on you and I saw a couple comments in my videos that you know the S18 cut out on you just a couple times. But if you ride it not that fast, if you ride it more carefully and if you have the spare money, spare change to get it, I think still it's a fun wheel. It's just in my opinion not that much value for money as the other wheels I've mentioned. So this concludes my top five EUCs of 2020 video. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Comment if you would see the list in any other shape or form. If you think I'm wrong or I'm right or I'm wrong way, then just let me know. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to see more content like this. And I see you in the next video. See you soon.